Hey there viewers and welcome back. Today I want to take a look at installing the camshafts and the timing belt. Ooh, all of these other good fun pieces. So everything we have shown you here today is going to apply exactly the same for both jugs. Um, I'm probably just going to show it to you once. So I have the following pieces in front of me. The valve cover, the camshaft, the timing belt, the two rocker arms that go to the appropriate side, and the two rocker arm pins. Let's get started. Okay, so like the 630, uh, you're gonna start by aligning this uh, piston to top dead center of the appropriate jug that you wish to get started on. So I'm gonna choose this jug so I'm simply going to turn until I see this lump on the uh, crankshaft line up with essentially this nodule uh, right there as far as that's concerned. So that puts this jug's piston at top dead center. Once that's happened, you're simply going to take your belt, and uh, this belt's never been ran ever, so we can really put it in any way uh, that we want, and we'll slide it around the crankshaft and up. Actually, we better put the belt on for the other side first. So there's two gears, one in the back and one in the front. Uh, simply make sure that you get your cam belt uh, for the back gear, which is the other jug, uh, on the crankshaft. It doesn't have to be right, it just has to be on there uh, so that we can mess around with it a little bit later. So anyway, we'll do the exact same for this side. Okay, just grab it, don't crimp it, just bend it a little bit, loop it around the crankshaft, and then push it all the way up so all the slack ends up up here as best you can. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the appropriate, oh, wow, sorry, we're working at a really weird angle here. Uh, you're gonna grab the appropriate rocker arms and just go ahead and install those if you want. Make sure you're putting the pins in from the top. Okay, everything seems to work nice. And then go ahead and grab your camshaft. And you can look on your camshaft and you'll see these two notches. It kind of looks like a smiley face, sort of. Uh, but these two notches need to be flush with this beveled edge on your cylinder. So. I think it's easier to slide her in from the bottom. It can be wrong. Don't obsess about getting everything right at this point in time so you can see that it's off. So just go ahead and push down on the cam, slip the belt by a tooth here and there, and eventually you'll see that your timing marks are like precisely, you know, spot on. So I realize it's black on black and it's a little bit tough to uh, see, but you should be able to see that that's indeed happening. Okay, uh, once that's finished, you can go ahead and put your cam pin in. I'm just gonna put some motor oil on that for the time being. And you can dish, tension the belt up real nice. Just make sure you put it in with this divot here, uh, being you know lined up with the, the bevel because the valve cover holds that pin in. So once that's finished up, um, all I'm gonna do inside of here is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a little bit of luber plate on the uh, lobe of that camshaft, just a little bit on each side as best we can. And then uh, should be able to call it good. There's not a lot of stuff in here to, uh, to grind around. So um, if you want, you know, you can put a tiny little bit of motor oil on, you know, the valve stem if you want. Kind of up to you. It's a little tough to do on this motor with the way these rocker arms are are set up, but everything should be good to go. We'll do the exact same thing on the other jug. All right, well there you got it folks. That is the complete install of both camshafts. Just make absolutely sure when you get that timing done, uh, when you line up those timing marks, that you are indeed getting top dead center happening on both cylinders. Obviously both cylinders are not at top dead center at the same time. Otherwise, nothing is going to work correctly. Uh, you should, be able to jiggle your rocker arms just a teeny tiny little bit. Uh, we shouldn't have messed with the valve lash on that. I don't have a service manual again for this engine. I'm sure it's a pretty dang easy spec to find. 
so I'm not too worried about it. Um, the 630 is a little easier to set the lash on because the valve cover isn't glued to the motor, but uh, this one's fairly easy as it stands. So I suppose our next step uh, is not to put the valve covers on, but instead we're gonna go ahead and get this sump cover installed because we have the RTV out and everything like that. So let's make that happen in the next video. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.